Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora's Clinic. In today's episode, I'll be reviewing the medical features of the Apple Watch Series 4, including how it helps to keep your heart healthy. Now this watch can make calls, it can take calls, it can send SMSs, and you can even check your emails on it. But as a medical doctor, I feel it's my duty to give you more information about the medical features. It has a pedometer, a heart rate monitor, an EKG, what is an EKG? Well, you've come to the right place to find out, so make sure you sub up on Dr. Nori's channel. <laughs> you may have even heard that the Apple Watch has even saved people's lives. But how does it do all of this? Well, to get started, we'll take a look at the heart. Just look at this beautiful organ. It's roughly the size of an adult fist and it sits centrally in our bodies. It helps to deliver oxygen and nutrients to our tissues to help us keep us alive. Not only does it look beautiful, but it also sounds glorious. In fact, if you like listening to heart sounds, make sure you check out my video exclusively on heart sounds, how it sounds like during rest and also during activity as well. Let's take a look inside the heart. So the heart is made up of four chambers, two at the bottom, known as the ventricles, and two at the top, known as the atriums. Now these work in conjunction with one another to pump blood outside of the heart into the body, delivering oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. Not only does it deliver oxygenated blood to your body, but it also takes deoxygenated blood from your body through to your lungs and then through the heart again. It is an absolutely fascinating organ. And to be honest, we can't live without this. But where does the Apple Watch fit into all of this? Well, when you first set up your Apple Watch, you'll be asked to put in your date of birth, your gender, your height, and your weight. And this will allow the Apple Watch to accurately detect what your heart rate should be doing. For example, those who are quite athletic may have a lower resting heart rate than those who are not as athletic or who have an average fitness. It is therefore vital for you to use the heart rate function accurately on the Apple Watch that you enter the correct details in when you're setting up. The Apple Watch monitors your heart rate using a sensor on the back. You can either set this to continuous monitoring or you can just monitor it as and when you want to. But in order for us to interpret the results from the Apple Watch, we actually need to understand what a normal heart rate is. For an average adult, the resting heart rate should be anywhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute, which means that the blood is flowing outside of the heart 60 to 100 times in an average minute. An athletic person may have a lower resting heart rate and conversely somebody who may be on certain medications may either have a higher or lower heart rate. It's always really important that when you are working at your average heart rate to discuss it with your medical practitioner what your target should be. Now one of the medical features that the Apple Watch boasts is that it's able to tell you when your heart is pumping too quickly or if it's pumping too slowly. Straight out of the box these targets are already set for you. For example it will give you an alert if your heart rate is over 120 beats per minute for over 10 minutes and it will also send you an alert if your heart rate is under 40 beats per minute for over 10 minutes. Now of course you can modify these targets depending on your own fitness and whether you have any existing medical conditions. But Dr. Nora, why should I even care if my heart rate is high or if it's over 120 beats per minute? Well, when our heart rate is raised for a prolonged period of time, we worry about irregular heartbeats, otherwise known as arrhythmias. And an example of this is something called atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is where the heart beats quickly and irregularly. And it does this because the electrical signals that are triggering the heart to contract are chaotic. And therefore you have a high heart rate from 125 to 175 beats per minute. Now this can be problematic because if the blood is pumping out and it's irregular, it can lead to small clots breaking off from your arteries or your vessels, leading to conditions like a stroke or a heart condition, which as you know, can be life-threatening. So it is therefore really important to detect these symptoms early on. Of course, there are other symptoms that can occur if you do suffer from an irregular heartbeat or something like atrial fibrillation. And this can include things like shortness of breath, chest pain, you may even feel that you have palpitations or you may feel a fluttering in your chest as well. Now it is great that the Apple Watch can give you an alert when your heart is pumping too quickly because it can alert you to go and see a medical doctor. In fact, there was even a case where a man was wearing his Apple Watch and it told him that his heart rate was beating over 120 beats per minute. And in fact, he did end up being diagnosed with atrial fibrillation and thus allowing him to have more treatment to prevent those nasty complications of strokes and heart problems. So in that sense, the Apple Watch wins definitely hands down with the heart rate monitoring app. But what about a low heart rate? Well, a low heart rate is classified as being under 60 beats per minute. Straight out of the box, the Apple Watch will send you an alert when your heart rate is under 40 beats per minute for a duration of 10 minutes. Typically, people who do have a low heart rate will have some symptoms, and it's really important that you don't just rely on your Apple Watch to let you know when your heart rate is low. For example, you could be experiencing dizziness, you could be experiencing some shortness of breath, you may even feel faint, you may even have some chest pain as well, and generally you may feel fatigued and weak and tired. 
it is vital that if you are feeling these symptoms, despite your Apple Watch telling you that your heart rate is normal, that you seek a second opinion from a medical doctor. Now, there may be some other situations where your heart rate may be high or maybe low. For example, you may have a high or a low heart rate if you're on certain medications. You may also have a low heart rate if you have an underactive thyroid or if you have any other medical conditions. It's vital that you speak with your medical practitioner to let you know what your individual heart rate should be and then you can tune in to your own Apple Watch device afterwards. Okay, great. So the Apple Watch can let me know if my heart rate is going too quickly or too slowly. But what about murmurs? To understand murmurs better, we need to look inside the heart. As we know already, the heart has four chambers, two ventricles and two atriums. And in between those ventricles, we've got something called valves, which basically are like leaves. And these help to control the blood flow going from the bottom of the heart to the top of the heart and vice versa. If these valves are leaky or if they're not working well, then it creates a turbulent blood flow, which then creates something called a murmur. And that can only really be heard during a stethoscope examination. Lean forward for me. And breathing in and out. So my recommendation would be that if you do feel that something's not quite right or if you feel that you have got those symptoms of shortness of breath or dizziness or you're just not feeling right, go ahead and see a doctor because nothing beats having an actual examination with a real life doctor using a stethoscope, placing your stethoscope on your heart and taking a listen to those valves and making sure that they're nice and healthy. Now, as you probably heard, the Apple Watch also does have an EKG or an ECG feature to it. What does that mean? Well, it essentially is a shortened way of saying electrocardiogram. What is an electrocardiogram? You may have seen it in Scrubs, you may have seen it in Casualty, Holby City, all of those shows, House, but basically it's where we stick stickers onto your chest to have a look at the electrical activity of the heart. And what this does, it tells us how the heart is firing off those electrical impulses around the heart to see how the contraction is of the heart. By analysing those funny squiggles that you see on the TV, it will then let us know how the ventricles and the atria are contracting with that pressure from the heart. It can also let us know if you have any irregular heartbeats, for example, the atrial fibrillation or another arrhythmia. An ECG can also give us an indication if there's any structural damage to your heart as well. For example, if you've had a recent heart attack or if you do have a murmur and it's causing your heart to be enlarged, an ECG is vital for us to see what's going on inside of the heart. One of the concerns we have as medical doctors with the Apple Watch EKG feature is whether or not people are going to come in worrying that the Apple Watch tells them that they have an arrhythmia, but actually when we come to do a real EKG, it's all normal. So in some sense, this may cause a little bit of hysteria and it may in fact cause some anxiety in the patient population. But anxiety aside, there have already been reports that the ECG features help save people's lives, which is amazing. However, please remember that it doesn't check for all irregular heart rhythms. So if you have any concerns, still speak to your medical doctor. All right, so you've heard everything you need to know about the heart rate monitoring app from high heart rate to low heart rate to arrhythmias to murmurs to EKGs. Whew, there is a lot to get through. But what about the pedometer app? Now we've all heard of step count, step counting, 10,000 steps. What does it all mean? There are some schools of thought out there that say that if you do 10,000 steps a day, you're likely to lead a healthier lifestyle, which to some degree is true because we know that the more active we are, the more healthy we are. Where did this all come from? Well, to look at this further, we have to go back in time. Let's take it back to Japan in 1965. That's right, we're taking it back old school. Okay. In 1965, Japan released a pedometer known as the Manpo Kai. This was heavily pushed through the media, and so it became an international sensation that we need to do 10,000 steps a day. We know that to have a healthy life, we should be doing at least 30 minutes of activity at least five days a week so that we're slightly getting out of breath. We know that an average person who doesn't have a sedentary job or a lifestyle will walk around 6,000 steps a day. And if you add on the 30 minutes of activity per day that you do, this roughly translates about three to 4,000 steps. So if you put the six to 7,000 steps plus the three to 4,000 steps a day, you roughly make around 10,000 steps. Now, from a doctor's perspective, I think it's fantastic that the Apple Watch monitors your steps. It gives you a barometer and an indication to see how well you're performing and how active you are during that day. However, you mustn't take this as gospel. If, for example, you're doing 10,000 steps, but you're eating McDonald's and KFC and Bob's Burgers and God knows what else, you're definitely not going to be leading an active and healthy lifestyle. It does require a little bit of common sense as well. So whilst I could be doing 10,000 steps a day, I may not be the healthiest person. Another great feature of the Apple Watch is that it lets you know what your kilojoules are doing. But for this to work, you do need to enter in your accurate height, your weight, your gender and your date of birth. It then gives you a target amount of kilojoules that you need to be burning throughout the day. And it monitors your activity through the steps, through the heart rate, to let you know how many kilojoules you've burnt off during that day. 
that's pretty cool, right? Of course, it does come with the caveat that if you are somebody who is particularly muscly or who is trying to bodybuild, then obviously this may not be the right app for you to use because you may need to have a higher calorie consumption or a kilojoule consumption compared to what the watch is telling you. And again, as with any of the other features on the Apple Watch, if you do need any advice for your individual needs, then it's worthwhile discussing it with your local dietitian or your medical practitioner. But on the whole, for an average person, again, it's a nice feature to have and it does help to steer you in the right direction. Now, one of the features that I particularly like about the Apple Watch is its falls detection. It does rely on you having to wear your watch all of the time, however, and the battery life on the Apple Watch probably is around 16 hours and you need to charge it up. So during that time, you won't be wearing it. But within the Apple Watch is a gyroscope and an accelerator. And what this allows to detect is any hard falls. So for example, if you're wearing it on your wrist and you've had a fall from a high surface, it will send you an alert and it will send you an alert to make sure that you're okay. You can then cancel that alert or if you've remained immobile and you haven't moved and you've not pressed the I'm OK button for one minute, it will then trigger off an alarm or an alert to your emergency contacts plus the emergency services, which I think is a fantastic idea. Now, this would be particularly useful in patients, for example, who have got epilepsy or even in the elderly patients as well. Now, speaking of the elderly, there are already a number of existing fall detection devices out there. These could either be buying a one-off alarm that may send you back two to four hundred dollars, or it may be a subscription service which may cost from twenty to forty dollars. The way that the Apple Watch is different, however, is that if it does detect a fall, it directly sends a message to the emergency services. And so this, as you can see, is useful for patients who, for example, their emergency contact is not available or they haven't, they're not able to get through to their emergency contact, they're quickly and directly getting to the right person for help, which I think is invaluable. The downside, however, is that the interface of the Apple Watch is really quite small. And for an elderly person who may be suffering from, say, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, it might be quite fiddly to navigate. It does also cost a fair bit of money and it does require the person to be wearing the watch 24 seven, which its battery life isn't the best. I'm currently getting about 16 hours of battery life and I'm having to charge it up. So whilst it is great, it does have its downfalls as well. Now, one of the other features of the Apple Watch is the breathing app. Now, you guys might be thinking, I breathe all the time. It's something that we do subconsciously. I don't need an app to tell me to breathe. Yes, okay, you're definitely right. We do automatically breathe. Thanks to our lovely human body, we are natural breathers. But did you know that we roughly only use about 70% of our full lung capacity when we're breathing at rest? Yes, that is right. So there's an area of our lungs that we are not addressing and we're not getting that oxygen in. So where the Apple Watch is useful in this situation, one, it helps to open up all of that lung capacity, particularly at the bottom of your lungs, throughout the day. So it gives you a reminder that you need to just take a deep breath. But two, by taking a moment just to breathe and reflect, it also helps with mindfulness. Now, you may have heard of mindfulness, but essentially it's being able to be aware of your surroundings, taking a minute to reflect, and just being on your own and trying to just relieve all of that stress, which I think is pretty useful. And yes, although we do breathe all the time, how often do you actually stop to think and take a deep breath? you instantly feel the stress relief. And last but not least, the stand app. Now, again, you may be thinking, Dr. Nora, we're always standing up. We stand up here, we stand up there, we stand up to go to the toilet. Yes, okay, I get it. We do always stand up. But what the Apple Watch does is that it aims for you to stand up for at least one minute during 12 different hours of the day. Now, this is also modifiable for wheelchair users, but the idea is that it wants to get you up, around and going, because as we know, having a sedentary lifestyle where we're sitting down all the time, it can lead to things like feeling sluggish, low energy, and you may even develop things like blood clots in the legs if you're sitting down for a long period of time. So ultimately, by standing up, sitting up, walking around, doing your steps, you're definitely on a path to a healthier lifestyle. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But for now, take care and stay healthy. Monitor to the EKG. EKG? What is that? <laughs> this phone. <laughs> now this watch can take. Now this watch can make. <laughs>